So I'm going to hold this out here because in our, our biosafety cabinet here we have a, a plastic lining in there that uh, will get too hot if we just put our burner in there. Alright, so we take our loop and we put it at the tip of the blue flame, right like that. And then we heat it, we move it forward across and sequentially get it red hot. And you don't want to go below because that actually is cooler. You don't want to get too high, but just go right above that and go in at about a 45 degree angle. And once you've gotten it uh, red hot from the loop to the end, to the handle, then you are sterile. As long as you don't put it down, uh, or touch anything then it remains sterile. But if you touch your lab coat by accident or the outside of a test tube, you have to start over. Okay, and that's no big deal. You just go like this and get it red hot and then sequentially heat it till it's done. Okay. All right, the, the other thing that we do is we have to have our tubes like this, uh, we have to heat them up, okay? And uh, and so when we work with the tubes, we're gonna take the slip cap off. So remember, this is this has an air vent in it, so that uh, it gives oxygen to the microbes. And so if you go beyond flat, tip it down a little bit, the fluid will go down and run out of here. And then that means you've contaminated yourself and you've contaminated the tube inside the microbes inside and so if it's a pathogenic bacteria then you have to deal with that and so it's, it can be quite a lengthy decontamination issue but uh, you know in our labs if you were able to work with the bacteria uh, then you would um, we would be working with um, bacteria that normally do not cause disease in healthy adults. And so these are um, biosafety level one is when we are under that condition. All right, so we're gonna take these and we're gonna hold them in both in one hand, you know, the opposite of your most dexterous uh, hand. The loop is in the other hand, your, your predominant dominant hand, and you hold it like an ink pen, okay? Okay, so we'll flame it first, and so here's our, we'll have to pretend that there's a flame here. Okay, we flame it, get it all flamed like that, and then we come out, and it's sterile. Okay, and then we have to flame this guy. Okay, the, this is the, the original tube, it has bacteria in it, for, if it was for real, and then this other tube is the one we want to add the bacteria, it's sterile right now. Okay, so we hold them in both one hand, and so we're going to pull the, the cap off with one finger. The little finger wraps around it and twist and lift it up. Okay, and that comes off. And then before we go in with the sterile loop, we have to sterilize the tip. And so all we do is rotate it through until it is now, uh, we've heated the whole inside of, uh, outside of the, the tube tip. And so you don't want to hold it in there very long, so it's just a, Round, just roll the tube as you do this and then pull it out. Okay, if you hold it too long in there in the heat, it will crack the glass and then you've just lost your experiment. Okay, so we're gonna put it in there, roll it, and then we can go in. Now, if you touch the outside of the tube, no big deal. You just go back in, flame it, get it sterile again, and then you go in, you go all the way in till you get to the sample. If it's liquid, you just get it into the liquid. If it's a solid surface, you just scrape that and you come out and then it's important at the exit that you do not have this uh, um, contacting the inside of the tube because when you bring it out, watch what happens. It flicks and then you just splattered bacteria all over. So we want to come up and then be, you can be in the inside of the tube, uh, touch the walls anywhere on the way up, but just before you exit that, you want to make sure you're in the center and then you come out cleanly and then this has bacteria on it, okay? 
Well, we're not done with this tube. We have to flame it one more time. Flame it, roll it in the flame, put our, our cap back on, and then we can roll this tube to the other side. Now this is the, the new tube that doesn't have any bacteria in it. Okay, we have to flame it, flame, and then we can add our bacteria. If it's the liquid broth, we'll just go in there and we'll do that, and then come out, make sure we're in the center so we don't flip, and then we'll claim it like this, or we'll flame it like this, and then we'll put the lid back on. And then before we're done, we have to heat this up. And because we have bacteria on here now, we want to start high and give it a chance to burn away. If you just put it in the hottest part of the flame, there's some liquid in there and it will splatter. Okay, so you don't want that. So you want to start high, and then when it starts to burn off, then you can get lower into the hottest part of the flame and then sequentially get it red hot all the way. And then, then you can set this down and then we'll take the, the one that was just newly inoculated, it goes in the proper temperature incubator. The one that it came from is our stock and it's very important. It might have took a long time to, to isolate this one. So we're gonna put that in the refrigerator or other conditions that are warranted, but usually the refrigerator. So the stock goes in the refrigerator the sample that you just inoculated, which means you just introduced the bacteria into it, it goes into the relevant temperature and then it incubates usually 24 hours, 48 hours max, and then we're done, okay? And then uh, we're good to go with that tubes. All right, so now I'm gonna uh, walk you through the whole thing um, from start to finish. So the first thing you wanna do is is Virex your surface area. So we have a little squirt bottle of Virex. We have to Virex it, and then we'll wipe it down with a paper towel. Okay, and then we can get our bacteria, our equipment gathered, and then we're gonna set this up. I'm gonna turn on the, the, the uh, fan, so it's gonna be loud, so I'm not gonna really talk. I'm just gonna show you how it's done with the flame. First, I'm gonna light the flame. All right, here we go. Okay, that was it. It goes pretty quick, but it takes practice to get it done in one hand. And it is important that you learn to do it in one hand. Okay, you don't want to put one in a test tube and the other in a or test tube rack and another one in a test tube rack and try to do it that way. You want to learn this technique. So that's what we're trying to teach you is the technique. And so part of that technique is to handle it with one, one hand, the tubes. And so you just kind of roll them around. You can practice at home getting something, uh, you know, a couple tube-like structures, um, you know, a couple, couple of uh, Sharpie pins, you can roll them around. Practice taking the cap off the Sharpie pin, flaming, practice framing, flaming, and uh, get your loop, all that. So you wanna do a dry run simulation just like you were doing uh, it for real, okay? All right, that's it, thank you.